Hey guys, welcome back. We'll continue with the book Python for Data Analysis. And in this video, we're going to cover how we can aggregate and group our data using pandas. This is part of a multi-part series, so feel free to subscribe to the channel to not miss any videos. Let's jump right in. We're going to start out with the basics and learn how to think about group operations. We're then going to dive deeper into data aggregation. And after that, we're going to cover group transforms. Finally, we're going to cover pivot tables and cross tabulation. In order to follow along, feel free to head over to westmckinney.com book. The link is also in the description down below. Now, categorizing a data set and then applying a function to each group can be a critical component of our data analysis workflow. In fact, one of the reasons why relational databases and SQL are so popular is because it's really easy to join, filter, transform and aggregate data using relational databases and SQL. But using query languages like SQL comes with certain limitations. And we're going to learn that by using Python and Pandas, we can perform very complex group operations by using Python functions that manipulate the data associated with each group. Now let's get started and let's open up our terminal and activate our conda environment. And then we can switch over to IPython. As before, we are going to import NumPy as well as Pandas. But before we dive deeper, let's first cover how we should think about group operations using Python. The general approach we're going to use when working with group operations is called split, apply, combine. This means that in the first stage of our process, the data that is contained in our pandas object is split into groups based on one or more keys. And then once this is done, a function is applied to each group, producing a new value. And then finally, the results of these functions are combined into a result object. Here we can see an example of how that can look like. We have a key and we have our data, and then we're going to split this into different groups. As we can see, we have three different groups here. This is the first stage. Next, we're going to apply our functions. And then in the last stage, we are going to combine our data, the output of the different functions that we've been using on the individual groups. Let's switch back over to our terminal. And in order to see this in practice, we first are going to create a data frame object. And just as before, we are going to use pandas data frame class in order to create a new data frame object. In this case here, we are going to have two separate keys and then two data entries, data one and data two. Let's first have a look at our data frame that we created. And we can see here we have our values for key one and key two and then data one and data two. Now let's suppose that we want to compute the mean of our data one column using the labels from key one. In order to do that, we can use the group by function with a column at key one. So inside of our terminal, we can call group by on our data frame, specifically the column with data one, and we're passing the key one column of our data frame as an argument to group by. If we take a look at grouped, we can see that we have a series grouped by object. And now we can take that object and call, for example, mean on it in order to get the mean values. We can also iterate over groups. For that, we can use a for loop and say that for the name and the group inside of our data frame grouped by key one, we want to print out both the name and the group. We can also use group by in combination with Python functions. Let's have a look at an example and let's first define a new data frame object. And then we can take the data frame object, call group by on it, pass a length function as an argument and then call sum on it. Now after splitting our data, we can also aggregate data. Here we have an overview of the different functions available to us for data aggregation. We can, for example, count values. We can determine the mean value or also the median, minimum or maximum value. Let's head over to the terminal and let's take a look at an example. If we think back, if we look at our data frame, we remember that we have two keys and two data columns inside of our data frame. We can now use the group by function we learned about before in order to group our data frame based on a certain column. In this case, based on key one. We can then have a look at our grouped data. And of course, we know that we have a data frame group by object. Next up, we can take our data frame group by object, reference the data one column, and then determine the smallest value. And this returns to us the smallest values inside of our data set. But we don't have to rely on the default aggregation methods. We can also write our own aggregation methods. As an example, we can define a new function peak to peak which takes an array as an argument, and then we're going to return the maximum value divided by the minimum value. We can now go ahead and take our grouped data frame and then aggregate the values by calling 
the egg function and we're passing our custom function that we just wrote as an argument. Now as a return value we get back 0.819 for key A and data 1 and 0.2246 for key B and data 1. And what we did basically is we looked at the different keys, so key 1 for example for data 1, we looked at the largest value for key A, which is the first one here, negative 0.1765, and we subtract the smallest value for key 1 being A, so that would be the value down here, and this way we get this return value here. And the same is true of course for key B, so in this case we only have two entries here for key B and out of the two this one here is a larger value so we take this as a maximum value for data 1 and key B and we subtract 0 0.360150 and we get back this value here 0.224624. Now let's have a look at an example of taking the workflow we learned about before the split apply combine approach and let's look at a concrete example. Now in order to start out with splitting our data, we have one general purpose group by method which is most widely used, which is the apply function. And what apply does is it splits the object being manipulated into pieces, then invokes the passed function on each piece and ultimately attempts to concatenate the pieces. In order to take a look at an example, let's first create a new function. And our function called top selects the rows with the largest values in a particular column. Now in order to have a proper data set to use our apply function on, we are going to use pandas read CSV method in order to read out an example file. Inside of the examples folder we have the CSV file tips.csv and of course we need to make sure that the examples folder is inside of the directory that we are currently in. Now once we have read in that file we can take a look and we can see we have some information on how much has been tipped. We have the total amount of different bills here, the amount that was tipped and then some additional information like what day they were at the restaurant and of course at what time, for example for dinner time. Now we can add an additional column to our tips data frame. Specifically we're going to calculate the percent that has been tipped. For that we are dividing the tip amount by the total bill amount and that is going to give us back the percentage that different customers have tipped. And of course we can verify that just by calling head again. And now we can see we have an additional column here, tip percentage, and we can see, for example, in this case, 14.68% was a tip. In this case, only 5.94% was tipped. And with this information in place, we can use our top function that we defined before, and we can pass our tips in there as well as the number of columns. And this gives us back the highest value in column with index 6, or the seventh column, the tip percentage. And we can see that the largest tip percentage was 71% that has been tipped. The total bill was 725 and the tip was 515. Now next up we could go ahead and we could group by whether a person is a smoker or not. And then we can use the apply function in order to apply our top function on the subsets that are smokers or not. So here we can see the first five entries are non-smokers and then the next five entries after that are smokers. In this case we can see that the smokers actually tipped more or at least the highest entries here. The person who tipped 71% is actually a smoker. When we look at non-smokers, the highest tipper tipped 29%. Now similarly to the apply method that we just looked at, there's also another built-in method called transform, which is quite similar to apply, but it imposes more constraints on the kind of functions that we can use. Let's hop into our terminal and let's have a look at an example. We're creating a new data frame here, with some keys and values. And if we look at our data frame, we can see that we have 12 rows, 0 through 11, with a key and a corresponding value. Next up, we can use our group by method in order to group by the key. And then we can calculate the mean value by using the mean function. And here we can see for the different keys, A, B, and C, what the associated mean value is. Now, instead of using that mean function, we can also write our OM function called getMean. And we're going to return the mean value. Now we can go ahead and we can call transform on our data frame and we can pass our get mean function that we just defined as an argument. Now finally we can also work with pivot tables and use cross tabulation. A pivot table is a data summarization tool that is often used in spreadsheet programs such as Excel or other data analysis software. And a pivot table basically aggregates a table of data by one or more keys and then arranges the data in a matrix structure 
with some of the group keys along the rows and some along the columns. And we can create a pivot table in Python by using the group by function that we used before and additionally by combining it with a reshape operation using hierarchical indexing. So let's have a look at an example and let's remember that we have our tips data set from before. And let's just have a look at the first couple values by using the heads function. We can now go ahead and use the pivot table function that we call on our tips data frame. And we are specifying day and smoker to be the index. And then for the values, we are interested in the size, the tip, the tip percentage and the total bill. And by doing that, we can see that we now have our index values here, what day it is, so for example, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Thursday, and whether or not customers are smokers or non-smokers. And when we're using the pivot table function, there are a number of different options available. So as we saw before, we can specify the values as well as the index, but we can also drop non-existing values, or we can replace missing values in the results table. It's also possible to use a special case of a pivot table that computes group frequencies. And that's called cross tabulation or cross tab. To look at an example, let's import string IO from the IO module. And then we can define a multi-line string called data that is keeping track of the nationality and whether somebody is right-handed or left-handed. Now let's go ahead and let's call our read table function and let's pass our multi-line string data into string IO and let's separate the entries based on white space. Now, if you look at data, this gives us back this table here where we have our sample, the nationality, and the information whether people are right-handed or left-handed. Now we can take this table and we can call our cross tab function to summarize our data based on nationality and handedness. So whether somebody is left-handed or right-handed. And this gives us this overview here. Here we can see for Japan, we have two people who are left-handed, three people who are right-handed, and for the US, one person who's left-handed and four people who are right-handed. And of course, we could do something similar with our tips data, where we summarize our data based on the time they attended the restaurant, the day when they were there, and whether they are a smoker or a non-smoker. We covered how we can aggregate and group our data using pandas. In the next video, we are going to focus on time series data. Feel free to subscribe to the channel to not miss any videos and see you guys in the next video.